This is the 5 minute guide to the Prinz Eugen, an Admiral Hipper class heavy cruiser of the German Kriegsmarine. The KMS Prinz Eugen was the third ship in the Admiral Hipper class and the last to be completed. Unlike the perpetual bad luck that seemed to follow every other ship of the class to varying degrees, the Prince Eugen appeared to receive all the missed good fortune the other ships lacked. Somewhat ironically named for Prince Eugene of Savoy, who had been a British ally in the early 1700s, both Prince Eugen and the Italian light cruiser Eugenio de Savoia would spend World War II fighting against British interests. Laid down in 1936, she was originally to be named Tegetsov, but considering that he had led an Austrian fleet to victory over Italy at the Battle of Lissa, and Germany was now allied to Italy, the name was changed. Launched in 1938, the commissioning was due in July 1940, but an RAF raid left the ship with light damage that delayed this until the following month. Her first mission would be to accompany the Bismarck on the latter's first, and as it turned out, last, operational deployment. Originally it was hoped Scharnhorst and maybe even Tirpitz and other units would be coming as well, but in the end only the first two ships would sail. Despite attempted secrecy, they were pretty quickly spotted by the Swedish cruiser Gotland, and then by British recon aircraft and the Norwegian resistance. Activating their radar sets, the two ships dove into the fog present in the Denmark Strait at high speed to try and shake off detection, but soon enough Prince Eugen's radio team reported back detecting HMS Suffolk nearby and that HMS Suffolk had in fact detected them. Although given permission to engage the British cruiser, the fog obscured the Suffolk long enough for the Norfolk to also arrive, which meant that both German ships would have to try and take them out. They forced the British ships to retreat into thicker fog, but the Bismarck's guns knocked out its own radar, which led to Prince Eugen swapping places to use its own radar to scout. This turned out to be somewhat fortunate, as the last visual sighting had been Bismarck leading and Prince Eugen following. So, as the Battle of the Denmark Strait opened the next day, the Hood initially targeted Prince Eugen in the mistaken belief that she was the Bismarck, leaving the German battleship relatively free to engage the Hood, on which Prince Eugen had scored a hit, until the Prince of Wales found the range, and we all know how well that ended for the Hood. With the Prince Eugen switching fire to the Prince of Wales once Bismarck had found the range on the Hood. Due to damage incurred in the battle, Bismarck would then attempt to break off for France whilst detaching Prince Eugen for commerce raiding. A brief re engagement with Prince of Wales gave the distraction needed, and Prince Eugen slipped away into the Atlantic, avoiding sharing in Bismarck's fate. However, with the impact of Bismarck's subsequent loss, as well as engine trouble, the ship was ordered home and, again with great luck, managed to sneak through the various British convoys, their escorts and hunting warships to reach France by the 1st of June. Here she joined Scharnhorst and Gneisenhau, and all three would be subject to intense bombing by the RAF. The ship would take a heavy hit from an armour-piercing bomb that would need repairs and that lasted until the end of the year. In February 1942, in order to redeploy the ships to Norway, all three, along with an escort, made the famous Channel Dash. Sticking close to the French coast and fending off a minor attack by swordfish torpedo bombers, the ship then managed to evade torpedoes from destroyers and fire from the Dover batteries, arriving in Germany undamaged, unlike the other two large ships, both of which had taken significant damage, mostly from mines. Redeployed to Norway alongside the Admiral Scheer, and a destroyer unit, the Prince Eugen would then be hit by a torpedo from the submarine HMS Trident, which blew off the stern. But she managed to make it back into port, patch up some emergency repairs, and then head back to Germany, dodging an assault by four squadrons of torpedo bombers on the way. Blocked from heading back to Norway by, after a refit by constant British intelligence efforts, she spent some time in the Baltic training to cadets. But as the tide of war turned, she would spend more and more time engaging in fire support duties against the Soviet army as they pressed the German army back. Finding time in all this to nearly cut the light cruiser Leipzig in half in a heavy fog collision, but again surviving to return to the gunnery duties. Towards the end of the war she would come under attack by Lancasters carrying the toolboy bombs which had devastated the Tirpitz. But her luck held. The bombs sunk Lutzau nearby, but left Prince Eugen unscathed. She would then be surrendered to the Royal Navy, 
and subsequently awarded as a war prize to the United States. The USS Prince Eugen was then extensively examined by the US Navy, and her remaining German crew sent home, which prompted the catastrophic failure of 11 out of her 12 boilers. Partly as a result of this, she was towed into the Pacific and used as part of the fleet disposed of in atom bomb tests Abel and Baker. At a distance of 1,200 yards from both blasts, the ship walked off the first one with just some damage to her masts, and took no appreciable damage from the second blast, but was now completely and utterly radioactive. A fish recovered nearby was able to perform its own X-ray due to the alpha radiation ingested and worked into its scales. Due to this high amount of radiation, a small leak on the ship was not able to be fixed, and six months later she capsized and sank. You can still go and see the wreck, although I would advise standing a very long way away and taking a telephoto lens with you, unless you especially like dying of radiation poisoning. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to tag your question with Q&A if you want to leave a question for the dry dock.